Yes, I'm Dr. Sarah Lambert and I'm currently in an honorary research position with Deakin University in Melbourne, Australia. And um, I'm also uh, working part time for RMIT in their equity and inclusion um, division, which is really lovely to have both an opportunity to do both um, research and um, equity practice. And um, my fellowship um, really enabled me to extend the value and the reach of my um, National um, Australian Textbook um, pro open textbook project and um, I was able to undertake a range of activities to kind of deepen and broaden the dissemination of that work as, as that project dragged on longer than I think anyone thought. Um, uh, and, and at the same time I was also able to have some um, some input um, a, a, into a, a an actual open textbook project that's being developed by Dr. Amanda White at UTS, uh, who's been um, chipping away at developing an Australian uh, version of a, um, a major first year accounting textbook. So um, it was really great to be able to focus on um, extending the, um, the reach of the research, which uh, had a social justice um, framework and perspective, um, because it enabled me to really focus on the equity and inclusion aspects of, um, of open education. So both parts of the fellowship really are underpinned by that commitment to diversity, equity and inclusion. Um, so they were sort of separate, but very much um, underpinned by um, similar kind of approaches and goals. I think the fellowship came at a really challenging time. Um, we had been through COVID and the sector was being really reduced. There was a lot of redundancies and a lot of uncertainty. Um, it was very important that we come together to try and find ways for open education to progress and um, and to maintain hopeful about the um, the, the, you know, what could be achieved within higher education. So for me, the fellowship enabled me, it was a mechanism and a routine way of um, catching up and enabled me to stay connected to, um, to, the, to the network internationally. And, and it sort of really pushed me just very subtly to keep connected at the time when it was a feeling very isolated actually. So it sort of gave you a reason um, to reach out and consider your work and how, who could help and um, how you could impact it. So just the sheer structure of the fellowship enabled me to just keep um, pushing uh, myself and the research forward and the impact of it forward um, in a way that maximised the network nodes and points. I think I have a tendency to be a bit head down, bum up and just sort of, you know, get, I kind of can get a bit stuck in my own lane. So the fellowship really um, brought a structure that enabled me to connect. I would be thinking about who in the network um, would be useful to touch base and to consider. And some of those serendipitous connections, you know, have been useful. So um, I think, um, the strength for me was was not having too much like push to get a particular thing done, but allowing me to really advance and make the most of the research that that I had done. Because um, I think it's it's all too easy to just roll on through onto the next project, but if we don't spend the time to really unpack the value of it for different audiences, we we don't you know don't we don't get so much out of it. So. Um, being kind of pushed also to put in an application for OER Global. I, I might not have done that, but that was a really positive experience. And I ended up doing a pre-recorded session that was um, that I was really quite proud of. I think it, it captured a snapshot in time of where this research was up to and introduced a different narrative about the outcomes from a social justice perspective, um, about um, that producing good graduate outcomes. So open textbooks, um, better quality and more inclusive textbooks being 
um, something that produces more uh, better graduate outcomes. So that was just a really exciting time. Um, I can't say there was any weaknesses from my perspective. It worked really well. Um, I think the challenges all came from being so isolated in the lockdowns and, and having other parts of our lives kind of fall apart. Um, so, yeah, being able to also have um, the GOGN staff have, you know, being caring and, and uh, sort of, you know, reaching out personally and making sure everyone's moving forward was just very um, helpful in what was a really challenging time. I think for me, um, it was just how long a major research project um, goes for. Um, you think you're finished, but the last six to 12 months of finalising reports for funders and all of the dissemination activities actually consume a vast amount of time to do to a high standard. So um, I think um, it was the first um, my first experience post PhD as the chief investigator leading a national study. So it was a pretty big study. And um, of course, I'm going to learn a lot along the way. But um, the fellowship came at the point where I thought I'd be finishing it and wrapping it up. But in actual fact, there was just a huge amount to, to, to keep doing. But on the upside, there was just so much benefit in doing it as well. So I really, um, I really grasped the long tail of, of those substantial research projects. And I'll definitely be, you know, really pacing myself more for the marathon rather than the sprint, I think, um, of uh, any time I get an opportunity to do a major research project like that that involved numerous institutions nationally. Um, but it also gave me an opportunity to, to see um, – to, to practice what it's like to, with Amanda, for example, how you can work with an individual academic who's who's keen but uncertain about the equity and inclusion elements, and you know how you can, you know, quietly plant some seeds and and show and and have some influence, but not cross that line. You know, it's definitely her project, and so I think um, I, I had I gained from that experience of knowing, you know, where I can. Um, provide some um, influence and also assistance and where, um, you know, where the other parties need to really go and, and why it also is slow getting those projects up as well. So on the front end of those projects, you know, what, what has to happen. So those were really useful things to come out of the fellowship. And I think also um, I really reinforced how important um, – other networks are to support open education. So within Australia, we have Ascolite, a major um, professional body that runs a major um, edtech conference every year. And they have a special interest group um, dedicated to open educational practice. And that group were a core um, communication channel throughout the research and also through the fellowship. And um, there was a sense that through the fellowship, I was able to amplify and enhance the energy and enthusiasm between projects because when I started, we had really um, just a couple of spots of, of practice around open um, educational practice and textbooks in particular in Australia. But um, by the time the project had finished, all the dissemination, um, other people who um, leaders like USQ and the SIG had been, you know, doing work and their work had also gained traction. We started seeing new Australian titles come out of their work and that's, you know, all of that coalesced with a great deal of energy. So um, I read, uh, there's the the SIG is meeting tomorrow um, to discuss the, this kind of upswing of projects in the Australian higher education sector. And um, and apparently Adrian Stagg, who is chairing that at the moment, um, doing a, a wonderful job, he commented that there is this year 30, 30 Australian textbook projects underway nationally. I mean, that is just a, a huge number. <laughs> So um, it's been a very big year and I do think that the fellowship has enabled me to um, 
to really amplify and connect a lot of dots and have the time um, and the sort of focus to um, to to yeah to be part of this um, maturing Australian open educational practice. So, yeah, as I was saying before, just um, nudging me periodically and asking, you know, how things are going and having a face to face and reflecting on what's being achieved, it, it kind of lifts you up above your day to day grind and gives you a helicopter view that made me think, oh, I could be reaching out to this person or that person or talking about other, you know, bringing people in across the network and and it just... Um, it just, yeah, it just gave me that extra push and, and I think um, lifted me up out of my um, tendency to just be, you know, head down, bum up. So, um, yeah, the, the I didn't need heaps from the staff, but just keeping me on track, um, keeping on calling those meetings, asking questions, giving me that opportunity to reflect. And I just do a lot better when I'm bouncing ideas off people Um I think I would have missed some really good opportunities without um, the GOGN staff kind of really asking me what's going on. It's just like having, um, yeah, a critical friend support your work and um, it was fantastic. Well, yes, as you can see, I mean, it was all about um, deepening and, and broadening the, the impact of that major national study. So. Um, I think on a on another level, it also just uh, gave me hope in a really difficult time. Um, my role was made redundant and I was really unsure how I could keep making a contribution in this space and how I could keep the attention on this sort of social justice opportunities that open education has beyond, you know, the kind of access for everyone argument. So I... Um, I, I felt very lost. So um, just uh, being able to navigate and have a purpose through that difficult time and to come to the end, um, it did take, uh, um, you know, it was a fair gap, but to come to the end of that and find that I'm able to, um, I'm able to, you know, my work has a life. So that's, that's great. And it's not just, you know, my work, my work captured up case studies and examples from around the country. So, you know, the work, um, has a life, but also I've been able to, um, you know, pick up some really meaningful contract work and and um, and and just maintaining my hope at that time. I think it would have been quite easy to just sort of give up on things and just try and find work in other ways. But um, yeah, this piece came at a time that just gave me um, a bit of hope and a little bit of. Um, meaning and focus uh, to get to the point where now I do feel that I have a nice balance between um, research collaboration work and um, doing some practical work for equity and inclusion. And actually at the moment, RMIT is developing an open scholarship policy and I've been on the steering committee for that. So, you know, that wouldn't have happened without the research and, um, and yeah, it, it just feels great to be at a point where I have research and practice in my life and um, we're able to continue. So, yeah, it's a good place now. It's hard to say because they're so varied. Um, I think when I sp have spoken to the other fellows, they, their motivations are quite diverse. So I think overall it would be about um, really understanding where GoGN as a network wants to go and the influence it wants to have on open education globally and where there's opportunities um, for your interest and their interest to to align um, and um, yeah just start talking and see if it's the right thing and if it might be the right time and maybe it mightn't be the right time now but you know there might be um, the next year um, plant some seeds to line something up. So um, I think where where someone has done some good work and has some good foundations, but also some good ideas that just need a little bit more of a lift or a connection with others, um, it would be you know really worthwhile to explore through the fellowship.
I think I've talked about that a lot already. Yeah. Hey, yeah. so yeah, this really um, um, being an alumnus and having contact and meaningful contact. You know, being um, a fellow, being invited to, you know, encouraged to, you know, submit to conferences. Um, but I'm also writing a paper. I've finished and we're just about to publish um, with Johanna Funk, who's a, another um, fellow and alumni. So um, I think it encourages that ongoing um, collaboration across the network as well. And I certainly in the future will be um, open and keen to seeing what other kinds of um, writing collaborations across the network might be useful and timely. So we just have to see. Again, very personal what people come to the network for, but oftentimes um, people who join don't have a lot of local support. So um, I think they've already done the best step by joining. <laughs> My advice that I have is for people who are considering joining is to do it <laughs> because you won't feel so isolated when you're connected to um, a global community of researchers who are all passionate about open education, the different elements there. So um, it, it, you just need to, I guess, not be shy about who you are and why you do what you do because, you know, People love that. They want to know who you are, what you're interested in, what what drives you to do that work, and then you'll more quickly find um, your your tribe within the um, open education community. And um, personally, I find Twitter has been really great for me. I started um, that account as I began day one of my PhD, and I've maintained that. And I know it's not always ideal for for some people, but I. Um, I only use it for this type of work. I have no other a, a agenda. So it, it means my um, timeline and my contacts are pretty tight um, and I boot out anyone who <laughs> tries to um, drag me off, you know, what I'm there for. And so I'm able to actually use it very effectively to, to feel connected, even though I'm a long way away from where um, a lot of the activity is. Um, definitely miss, missing the ALTC event, um, missing the um, FemEd Tech quilt um, in person, but loving to know that it's happening and um, my peeps are there and that is, you know, people will be able to really reflect and see all of that and, and hopefully I'll get a little, little taste of that on my um, Twitter feed as well. <laughs> 